So we're, we're in a little bit of a unique situation this year. We have a technical alliance with Hendrick Motorsports. Obviously, our, our third car, uh, Zane Smith, will be driving, who is a track house driver signed, and, uh, and with plans for him and, and his crew chief to, to move over to track house eventually. So we're trying to navigate that. To, they're learning some things that, that track house does and, and want to implement them on our cars. And, and we have some, uh, some other information. So we just try to put our heads together, manage all the information, and, and, and make the best product we can and put it on the track on Sunday. So uh, yet to be determined. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have some tough things to navigate through but I'm interested to see how it all plays out. The Hendrick and Trackhouse uh, situation can, from the outside, look complicated, and it's not completely simple, but um, I think for them, those two teams work fairly closely together with their Chevrolet relationship. Um, and for us, uh, there's already been a technical alliance with Hendrick before when we started, and so um, that's a natural for our team. The Trackhouse one's a little bit new, but uh, we've all been around the sport a long time. It's fairly straightforward. Trackhouse has been great about working with us that you know, we're gonna run this team as one three-car cup team, and that's the overarching goal. And after that, we can kind of work with how we need to with Trackhouse and Hendrick underneath that overarching goal, which is we're operating as one three-car team working together to get better. When you saw Legacy leave and go over to a different manufacturer because they felt like they weren't getting the support they needed maybe from Chevrolet, with your relationship mm -hmm. with Hendrick and Trackhouse, where do, you, where do you guys see yourself positioned amongst the Chevrolet teams and how, how beneficial is it to be a Chevrolet team mm -hmm. with the support they give with your relationship with the other? Yeah. Um, so just background, I was 20 years ago director of GM Racing, so I understand General Motors and Chevrolet pretty well. And so as a team, I think what we've done is embrace our relationship with Hendrick and what they can give to us technically, but also embrace what Chevrolet has built in Concord at their tech center and all the capability they have with the people that they have there. And they're very open with us to allow us to go in and pick their brains and how to get better. And so luckily we have some, some veteran crew chiefs and, and, young crew, and a young crew chief that have a lot of great ideas. So we're gonna go do everything we can to learn from them and work to get better. I think that once we show what we can do on track and then we start showing improvement, I think all those relationships will get better and I think pretty soon we'll, we'll see that we're, we're able to share amongst all the other Chevy teams and work together with them. When the decision was made to, to take this space, when, when, were you on board yet here? I know you came on board like December-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, so you weren't involved in that part of it, but what does being in a place like this. This is a first class building that Kyle built. Mm -hmm. You've still got a lot of his employees on board mm -hmm. from the truck side. Um, and I guess to wrap that question up, what does it mean to be in a place like this and what do you hope it looks like in five years? <laughs> I think the, the first thing was we had to navigate working together to figure out how we're gonna process all of these race vehicles in, in the facility. And so there was a lot of work to logistically figure out where that was going to happen. Um, each, you know, the, the truck group has a, has a goal of trying to win the races and championship. The cup group has a goal to improve and try to stretch and get a car in the playoffs. And we're all trying to figure out how to do this in this footprint. Um, and while it's a beautiful building, there's a lot of things going on in, in a rather small relative footprint. Um, but I think we've done a good job of working together to find a way to do that. And the important part was we all work together across the whole technical group to figure out how to do it. So I feel like we're in a good spot to move forward. It is a great facility. We're looking forward to, to working out of here. It's just the right size right now. Um, and hopefully as we move forward and we grow capabilities, we can still make it all work. It's, it's been a huge challenge. It's, it's not just getting ready for the race season. It's moving into a new race shop making sure that everyone has the room they need to do for, for the cars and trucks that we're gonna run. So it's not only been just planning and getting the cars ready, it's the logistical challenge of the move. But uh, as we get ready to go to the clash, I feel like we're in a good spot getting ready to start the season. When you're watching how quickly this team is growing and the success you guys have had since you, mm -hmm. since you started a few years ago, how fulfilling is that knowing that you know you kind of have these hopes and you have these dreams but you never really know how they're going to pan out and you're watching it in real time at quite a fast speed do what you want to do i think that the, the exciting part is um, having new teammates coming from other teams that want to be part of the journey still somewhat early uh, in the trajectory 
And so there's a lot of opportunity uh, as we grow. We have a long way to go to be competitive at the top end of the sport, but there's a lot of enthusiasm coming into the ground floor of the whole operation. When you get these new guys, I know that's such a great feeling, but you also have you know, someone like Corey who's been around from the beginning. Yeah. He's full and on fire right. here. How, how vital is he to the team and what does he bring to, to these new guys as well? You know, it's interesting. Corey is just a natural leader in his personality. It's a big personality, but he's one to pull people together. And I think I saw that quickly at the Christmas party where he just kind of got up there and brought it all together and emceed it and, uh, and, and has a way of pulling people in. And I think he'll be a good uh, example for Carson and Zane who have been around racing obviously in their young career, but being a leader on how to, how to work with the team, how to manage through a full cup season, I think it'd be a great example for those two. We're looking forward to this new season and, and what you want to do. Is it, we have to win to have success, we have to make the playoffs to have success. What, what calculates a successful year for Spire Motorsports? Yeah, it's an inter interesting question. I think it's important, um, obviously the goal of any race team is to win and, and that's what we would like to do. But I think the important part is to get better every week and continue to grow all of the people and processes every week and incrementally improve to where you get to that point. So I think it would be, I think we'd be doing ourselves a disservice to think we're just going to start the season and we're going to go race against Hendrick and Gibbs and Penske and, and all of the top players. I think we know we, we're in a situation to grow. So we have to do is work to get everything a little bit better, whether it's our race cars a little bit better, how we work together, as a group and a team a little bit better, we have to do that every week. And I think if we just see incremental improvements through the year, we're gonna be where we wanna be. Something that Corey mentioned is, uh, loves a new building, but hates how there's a bunch of pictures hanging up here. Um, when, when Inspire Motorsports is able to put in that first cup trophy, how much of a milestone is that for you? What is that going to mean for you personally as someone who has poured so much into this? <laughs> well, I think, I'm, I mean, certainly that's the ultimate goal, um, and it would be a huge moment, I think, for everyone, right? Because this series is probably the deepest and most competitive series in the world. And I've been fortunate to work in IndyCar, I've worked in sports cars, um, but this series has, is the deepest top to bottom in competition. So anyone who wins that cup, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment and a great feeling. But if you're able to do it from the ground up, I think would be something that's really probably hard to put into words. Getting situated between three cup cars and four truck teams, uh, piling into one, one building under one roof has been a, a tall task, a lot to overcome, you know, a lot of different personalities with different ideas and trying to make everybody happy and the workflow work for everybody. So it's been a little bit of a challenge, spent a lot of time hiring some people, you know, we're ramping up our staff, uh, just trying to increase performance going into next year and, and that takes, uh, you know, a lot of good people. So. Um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of late nights and, and sorting and figuring things out along the way, but it's been really fun. Having everyone under the same roof and having some of the advantages that this new building brings to you, um, what, what do you think that provides Spire as a whole going through the season? Well, we have a lot of veteran guys uh, that have been cup crew chiefs before on the truck side in, in Bono and, and Patty. So, you know, we can always lean on those guys and, and bounce ideas off. So it's nice to have a, a different perspective or, or a different outlook on things where some of us younger guys are kind of more data driven, have an engineering background. It's still, uh, it's still good to have a little bit of old school mentality in the house. So a lot of great people to lean on and uh, looking forward to working with everybody. You guys have kind of been with Spire since it started. Um, and now the growth that's happened in just a few years. Uh, what, what have you seen and how, how amazing is it to be a part of it as someone who was there from the grassroots of it all? Yeah, nothing surprises me anymore. Uh, nothing shocks me when somebody brings me something that's happened or, or want to change something. So uh, it's kind of got me used to take on any challenge, uh, kind of starting from the ground up, which, is, which has been fun. It's, it's been a process, a growing process. Literally my first day uh, at Spire several years ago, we were painting walls. So, um, you know, Jeff and TJ have afforded us this awesome opportunity to come you know, moving this, uh, you know, state-of-the-art facility and, you know, we have all the tools we need. So it's, uh, we've put a lot of work and effort to, to get to this point. So now hopefully to capitalize on just being able to have everything we want and need. When you have some of these rookies that you're adding on, both the drivers and some of the crew chiefs, um, do they kind of bring a little bit of that new excitement to the team and does that kind of fade off onto you a little bit? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
it's interesting to get to know new personalities, new ideas coming in, and, and how uh, they've experienced things uh, throughout their career and, and their approaches, right? How can we change? What, what we can, can we take from that, from what we've done and what they've done, and kind of mix it together and, and move the needle and make our cars faster? That's the goal at the end of the day, right? So the, these young drivers, they're going to keep Corey honest, I think, uh, this year, which will be fun. And, you know, I'm sure we'll learn a little bit from them along the way, and hopefully we can teach them quite a bit, too. Daytona come up right around the corner now. Um, I know Corey likes those speedways. I know he does well on them, and you as well. Uh, what, what are your thoughts headed into Daytona, and what is it going to take for you guys to be successful on that track? You know, anything can happen there. Um, you can be a victim of circumstance, but you just got to approach it like you do each and every week. Try to, you know, perform at the top level and, and optimize your day, really, right? It's, it's a long game, 38 weeks um, over the course of a season. One week doesn't define you, so... Um, you know, it, it, it's a it's our Super Bowl. It's a huge race right out the gate um, at Daytona. So it's very important that we finish well there to kind of set ourselves up in the points. So trying to manage that, but also uh, going for a win that could really, you know, uh, set the tone for the year, put you in the playoffs right out of the bat. It, it, it could change the way you're able to approach the rest of the season. So, you know, we won't leave anything on the table, but we'll try to be uh, smart about things and, and work together and uh, hopefully come out with a good result. You're kind of mentioning it. This could be a big breakout year for y'all. Is this what needs to happen for with Corey and with you to be able to feel like, okay, we're having a, a successful season. Things are going the way that we are planning for it to go. Does it take a win to do that? Or what are you really looking for within those first few weeks? I think each and every year Corey and I have been together. We've moved the needle. We've improved. We've climbed up the ladder on points position. We want to take another step, right? Um, a win is great. Everybody says they want to win. That's easy to say. Now, going out on Sundays and beating the best of the best, that's, that's really hard to do. Uh, so for me, um, to consistently execute um, solid weekends throughout you know, practice, qualifying, and race, you can't have any mistakes on any day throughout the weekend. So uh, just to grow my team and, and where we're, we're not missing little details and stuff like that, and I think if we do the little details right, then the result on Sunday will show all that.